Okay, today I'm going to be playing a game that uh, I'm not really looking forward to, but as the old saying goes, swallow my pride and just get her done. This is Nightmare 3D, a first person shooter based on the Hugo Trilogy, which I will admit the Hugo Trilogy are decent games. Uh, now, before I start, I gotta say this. Um, one of my YouTuber comments was that I felt a little biased towards the review. And and this is going to be the purpose of clearing things up, all right? Just so that way there's no misunderstanding or no uh, no uh, confusion. Anyways, for starters, um, we're going to start here. Nightmare 3D. Yeah. I don't know why they would name it that, N-I-T-E, instead of N-I-G-H-T, Mare 3D. I probably just to be hip or edgy, I guess. And the whole 3D thing, um, yeah, Wolfenstein 3D did that just fine. I mean, you don't need to force that word upon our throat. Thanks. Another question is, why not just call this Hugo 4? I mean, it would have made a whole lot more sense, and it felt a little bit more of a connection between the Hugo trilogy and this. But I digress. And like I said, this is not going to be pleasant. Yeah. Be gentle. I'm tough. Let's party. Another knockoff to uh, uh, difficulties that just uh, are trying to be funny with uh, saying, oh, catchphrases like this. I mean, we've seen this before a hundred times. Anyways, for the sake here, we're just going to do I'm tough. Okay, and... And you saw that dude who just left just a few moments ago. Oh, there he goes. As you can see, we're gonna, I'm gonna point out every single cliche I can think of, and you already saw just a moment ago that I was... I opened up a hole in the panel. Now, okay, let me just, let me just clarify just for the record here. Um. There is a huge difference between secrets that you don't need to collect and panels that you do need to open in order to beat, in order to get a perfect score. I mean, sure, they're optional, but for some reason here, other games just don't force that upon the player. This game kind of does. I don't know why. Maybe it's just me. Eh, eh, hard to say. Uh, another cliche is that all these horror uh, icons, as you saw just a moment ago, I saw Frankenstein, now we got bats, mad scientists, I mean, this is just cliche upon cliche upon cliche. I mean, I get it, this is a horror game. You don't need to force this down our throats. And I've played a f plenty of horror games back in the day, but, and none of them feel quite like, hey, we're going to force this down the player's throats just because we can. And plus, I'm sorry, this is 1994, um, well, technically 94, 95, but still. <sighs> Something about this game just rubs me the wrong way, and I don't know what it is. So why am I playing this? Simple, just to get it done. Now another question is when it comes for the, regarding the graphics is why are some of these enemies semi pre-rendered and the others are just sprites? I mean, I just don't get it. Another thing I'm going to point out is that uh Okay, it's probably just based on a difficulty variance, but uh sometimes the enemies in this game are complete morons. I mean, they'll just sit around and give you a staring contest to the death. Yeah. Real intimidating there. Let's see if I can solidify my point here. 
Okay, so I'm willing to bet it's probably just a difficulty ver Yeah, just a difficulty variance. Because I know on the easier difficulties, they walk around like they're complete idiots. He on this difficulty, which is normal, they do put up a little bit more of a fight. But this goes back to my point. Um, This sort of thing should be happening all the time and not just on specific difficulties. Because I, mean, I could go back to Doom right now, play that on the easiest difficulty, and I will know that I'm in for a challenge. Here, I just don't feel it. And I felt like even with the minimap on, as you can see, I just feel like I'm lost. Like, I don't know where I'm supposed to go next. Let me see if Mummy Man, uh... Get away from me, you stupid bat. I'm talking about the Mummy Man. Okay, it seems like on this difficulty here, they're a little bit more intelligent, but that's not really saying much. What's even more so is that sometimes they just sit there for about half a second before they attack because you have time to hit them first. Oh, this makes me wish I was playing Doom right now. But, once again, I digress. And I'm not getting myself killed on purpose. That takes me back to here. Yes. Yeah, see, like I said before, even with the map, I still feel kind of lost. With an emphasis on kind of. Whereas with games, like, whereas when Doom, it's like, oh, I've been here already. Okay, I gotta move on elsewhere. Here, it's like, okay, where am I going exactly again? And I'll be very straightforward when I say this. This game has not aged well. And I mean, I you know I can go back to Doom and I'll be like, yeah, Doom. The king of first person shooters. Well, at least in my opinion. Another question is, why are mummies attacking with Frankenstein's... Okay, Frankenstein's I could see attacking with a knife, but why would a mummy use a knife? Eh, just baffles me. And you know, for a horror game, this has some very upbeat music. I mean, nothing really suspenseful or anything uh, intense. Feels like a feels like a workout song. Yeah, imagine doing cardio to this. Well, anyways.
Yeah, that skeleton stood there for like about, I think it was like a second and a half before he attacked. Like, uh, what am I supposed to do? As I was saying before about cliche on top of cliche on top of cliche, like I said, like I said, this is just a cliche on top of a cliche of a game. I mean, we already got things like bats, Frankenstein's, mummies, skeletons. We get it, they're horror themed. We're not idiots. Well, of course, the skeletons, I gotta be honest, are a lot more aggressive than any other enemy I've seen in this game. And one thing I gotta, I'm still trying to wrap my head around is, how exactly are skeletons throwing fire if they don't know pyrokinesis? Well, I'm not gonna get into that topic. I don't know, I feel like this game's got more questions than answers. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, I forgot to mention one other thing. Okay, when you die, it's game over. No restarting from the beginning of the level, no second chances here. I'm sorry, how fair is this to the player? Not very. <sighs> well, I think we're gonna go on to another episode. Let's see if, uh, this time we're gonna go here. One thing I should have mentioned in my review is that at least there's consistency between episodes. As you saw from that cracked mirror, that was the end of episode one. The mirror's cracked from this side. Of course, if you really want to fully experience the ending, you should play the game. Well, I don't know if you really would want to play this game for yourself. Although, one thing I should point out is that at least there's one original concept. Not all weapons work on every enemy. I mean, some enemies take more damage from one weapon, and some are completely immune to another. So, I will give the game that. But that's all the props I'm giving this game. Thank you. 
Oh yeah, there's quite a few enemies in this level. You know what's unusual about these enemies is like, oh, I just want to give you a big hug. Yeah, real scary. Like I said before, I swear to God, this is the least scary horror game I've ever played. And I made that pretty clear during my review. Okay, that time we took about three seconds to attack, where it's like, I'm sorry, but you're supposed to be attacking me regardless of difficulty there, dude. And then these guys just stood around for like two seconds. And I know it's AI dependent, but that shouldn't be the case. I mean, the enemy should be attacking the player regardless. Because like I said, I could go back to Doom, play that on the easiest difficulty, and I would have proven my point. Once again, why are some of the enemies uh, grab designed differently? I said, there's no design consistency whatsoever. Because I can go back to Wolfenstein 3D right now and I'd see perfect eight sprites representing a quote unquote 3D model. In this game, no such thing. Well, to a degree. Of course, this is all one person's opinion, mind you. Oh, my God. 
Okay, I think this further emphasizes my point about AI stupidity. He saw him just walking around aimlessly. I mean, I was standing right here the whole time, and those mummies just completely ignored me for several seconds before realizing, oh, he's right here. Let's get him. I'm sorry. Like I said, it should not be like that. As soon as the enemy's in immediate proximity, you attack the player. No discussion needed. And what's this guy's deal? Is he just waltzing around? Oh, looks like you got a friend here. Beat it, Mr. Mummy. Yeah, are we having a staring contest or what? This is unbelievable. Now, as you saw back in the uh, back in the previous episode where I set the difficulty to normal, the enemies were a little more aggressive. Yeah, that's fine and dandy and all, but. AI should not be treated differently, differently just because it's on an easier difficulty or a harder. Well, actually, on a harder difficulty, if you make the enemy too stupid, then it'd be kind of pointless to play. Now, I know I've been a little harsh with this game, but it needs to be treated this way. Because, like I said, this game hasn't aged well, and unfortunately, there's, there's not much else I can say about this game without uh, being, a, uh, not being so negative about it. And I'm being serious, by the way. I am not uh, pulling any punches. And now I am out of powers. Great. I mean, yeah, I get the concept that you're not, that, yeah. You can't be too reliant on these things. Others, others are gonna go to waste.
my god. I don't know if I really want to waste time looking for one enemy, despite the fact that I can't find him. I'm just not even going to bother. Oh, that's real lovely. I need a yellow ID card. Grandiose. Well, you know what? I'm not going to waste time. Because before I end this, I'm going to share a few more things that uh, I found so cliche. Not counting this. Not counting that. No. Okay, let me uh, share this uh, with you. Episode 1, A House of Horrors. Enter the house of the evil Dr. Hammerstein, aided by his host of nasty minions. Cliche number one. He has captured your beloved sweetheart Penelope and imprisoned her in order to carry out evil experiments. Cliches number two and three. As Hugo, you venture into the horrific world of Dr. Hammerstein on your perilous quest for Penelope and a mystical mirror which leads to the other side. Cliches number four and five. The mission to rescue Penelope went out an easy one. Number six. You must not only defeat the crazy inhabitants of the house, including Dr. Hammerstein himself, you must also solve numerous puzzles along the way, some of which are easy, some not quite so easy. Okay, I'm not going to count this as a cliche, because most shooters back then really weren't about puzzle solving, so I'll give another prop to that. Finally, your journey will take you through the mystical mirror to the other side, where you will confront Dr. Hammerstein, who is holding poor Penelope captive. Another, I believe this is cliche number seven. The Plasma Core. Protected by the power from the Plasma Core, Dr. Hammerstein could not be defeated at the end of Episode 1. The only thing that has protected you was the power of the four colored pentagrams, a miscalculation on the part of the evil Dr. H. Cliché number 8. An evil genius who claims to be the smartest person, only to find out that his flaws were exposed. In Episode 2, you must find and destroy the Plasma Core, the source of Dr. H's power, protected by fiendish robots at the heart of his control complex. Only then will you be able to defeat him. Cliché number 9, I believe? Either 8 or 9. Death or glory. Having successfully destroyed the plasma core, you must now rejoin your search for the evil Dr. Hammerstein and your beloved Penelope. I'm not going to count that as a cliche. You descend into a mysterious world of stone chapels, eerie gothic horror, and fiery demons. Yeah, no connection there. Beware the cold-hearted aliens who stalk the unwary and be on your guard against harmless-looking ghosts who pack a powerful punch. More cliches. <laughs> I've said there's at least about maybe 10, maybe more cliches. I mean, I don't know. If anybody can keep track, if anybody knows exactly the number of cliches this game offers, let me know. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's much else for me to uh, uh complain about, or I mean talk about. And with that said, thanks for tuning in, and I will see everybody next time.